Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinkerer Studio. In this series of tutorials, we will be exploring the basics of Godot 3D. These tutorials are based on the Godot docs. The link is in the description. In this tutorial, we will be learning the basics of Godot, including downloading the game engine, and looking at the project manager, exploring the editor, navigation, scenes and nodes, the spatial node, meshes, and cameras. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more Blender and Godot tutorials. So let's get on with the tutorial. One of the great things about the Godot game engine is that there is nothing to install. To download Godot, go to godotengine.org and click on download. Unzip the downloaded folder and run the executable file. The first thing you see when you launch Godot is the project manager. Since we don't have any projects, we will see a pop-up window asking if we want to open the asset library. For now, just click cancel. The project manager is where you can create, remove, import, or play game projects. The drop down menu in the upper right hand corner allows you to change the editor's language. If you open up the templates tab, you will see options for downloading open source project templates and demos from the asset library. Simply select a template or demo and click download and choose where you want the project to go. To create a new project, click back on the projects tab and then select new project. In the new pop-up window, you can give the project a name and then either choose an empty folder or make an empty folder to save the project in. You can also choose a renderer. So go ahead and make a new project and this will be the project for the entire series of these tutorials. At the top from left to right you'll see the main menus, the workspace, and the playtest buttons. On the bottom left side, you have the file system dock, where you manage your project files and assets. On the upper left hand side, you have the scene dock, which lists the active scenes content. On the right side, you'll find the inspector, where you can change the properties of the objects in the scene. In the center, you have the viewport and the toolbar at the top, where you'll find tools like move, scale, or lock your scene's objects. It changes as you jump to different workspaces. The bottom panel is the host for the debug console, the animation editor, the audio mixer. These will be collapsed by default. For those of you who are coming from Blender, is important to note that the axes are different in Godot. The x-axis is the same as Blender, but the z and y-axis are swapped around as compared to Blender. So in Godot, the red axis is the x-axis, the blue line is the z-axis, and the green line is the y-axis. The standard Control s shortcut can be used to save a scene and the standard Control z shortcut can be used to undo. Scrolling the mouse wheel will zoom. The middle mouse button will orbit around the object. Holding down the shift key and the middle mouse button and dragging will pan the camera. And right clicking and dragging will rotate the camera. Shift F is free look mode where you can move around freely with your mouse or the W, A, S, and D keys. Pressing Shift F again will toggle out of free look mode. The perspective button in the top left 
will snap the camera to a certain view, such as the front view or the top view. Scenes are composed of a group of nodes, organized hierarchically in a tree fashion. When we click on the 3D Scene button, our scene opens with the spatial node already attached. Nodes are fundamental building blocks for creating a game. The first thing you see in the viewport is the gizmo. The arrows allow you to move an object within the scene, and the circles allow you to rotate an object within the scene. By default, the gizmo works in global space mode. It means the orientation, such as position and rotation, work according to the standard X, Y, and Z axes. By selecting the local space mode, or using the shortcut T, the gizmo works in local space mode, which means the orientation works according to the object's X, Y, and Z axis. If we look under the transform section of the special node, we notice that we have options for all three axes. Translation is the equivalent of position. The spatial node has no volume on its own, which is why we need to import a mesh into the scene. For now, we'll just be using the primitives provided by Godot. In order to add a mesh to a scene, we must add a mesh instance. Select the spatial node in the main menu and click on the plus button at the top of the main menu and search for Mesh Instance. Select the 3D Mesh Instance, which is the pink icon, and click on Create. In the Property Inspector, open the drop-down menu next to Mesh and select the cube. Now note that the cube looks blue, even though it is in fact white. This is due to the ambient lighting of the sky, but we will be leaving this at the default. By default, Godot does not add a camera into a scene. We must have a camera in order to see what is in the scene when we play the game. Select the spatial node in the main menu, and click on the plus button at the top of the menu, search for camera, then select the default 3D camera, the pink icon, and click Create. The camera also has a gizmo attached, so use the arrows to move the gizmo away from the cube. We can use the preview button in the top left corner to see what the camera is seeing. If you click on the preview button again, you toggle back out of the preview. So move and rotate the camera to a place and angle of your choosing. Click on the play button to see what the camera sees. You will first need to save your scene. This is the end of part one. In the next tutorial, we will be importing meshes and exploring rigid body physics. If you found this useful, please leave a like and subscribe. Have a good day.